splash into savings using discount code SUMETO on Surfshark VPN linked down in the description. That's a lot of nuts! Can you guys tell that was my second try trying to do that meme because I was already wet? No, you can't. Nope, shut up. I don't make mistakes. Anyway, welcome back to the weekly meme cap. Today, we're going to be taking a look at memes from this week. Who could have guessed? There have been an array of memes that I've been seeing all over TikTok that seem to have been pioneered by one particular car dealership, Central Houston Nissan, in which they've decided to just try and advertise to Gen Z with their extended warranties and their fantastic car salesmen by engaging in memery. Hey folks, come to Central Houston Nissan where you get your lifetime warranty on new and used. Come get knockout deals at Central Houston Nissan. Come to Central Houston Nissan where we have car washes for life. Now, I love the idea of mainstream businesses getting into making memes online for attention. Because the more people that are gonna legitimize the use of memes to garner attention and use it to benefit their business, well, the less stupid I'm gonna feel when I tell people what I do for a living at family reunions. That being said, I feel like it's a little bit silly to try and advertise to what is effectively my generation of people when it comes to car dealerships. On TikTok of all places, you think I'm gonna be scrolling through my memes and then suddenly decide to buy a car? A Nissan at the very least? Guys, I've still got three more payments on the tacos I ordered a couple months ago. I'm in no position to pick up a Sentra for 340 months. That being said, it wouldn't be a meme if other people weren't doing it and other businesses have decided to follow suit by recreating some of these similar memes and some of these businesses that I actually buy from. Tacos, in fact. <laughs> Now, I don't speak Italian, but I understand anything when it comes to food, and I'm pretty sure esta bien means it's delicious. The thing is, Zoomer humor isn't something you can keep up with. If you're at the age that you own a business and you want to put out promotional material, TikTok in its fast paced environment is not the place where you want to play the game of, hey, look, I can keep up too. Because as much as you think adding some memes to your promotional material is going to grab the attention of Zoomers, you're way off, my dude. They're doing shit like slow motion elbow dropping sandwiches to classical music, stuff that doesn't even make sense to you. And no, I didn't just make that up. I'm sure some of you guys are sitting around thinking, Samet, how can you condone this? Clearly, these are just people that are taking a platform in which we used to share memes and laugh at stuff and turning it into a corporate entity. Since when are you a corporate shill? And to that I say, ad time. You guys know why VPN companies like Surfshark VPN have such a history of reaching out to influencers such as ourselves to market their product to their hyena packs such as you? It's because back in the day, the idea of selling somebody on a virtual private network to secure and anonymize their online traffic didn't necessarily seem like something that every internet user needed. I mean, you're telling me I can trick Netflix into thinking that I live in Japan instead of America? Who cares? Guess what? You should care, because it's really starting to matter. Florida just passed a law that made it so that nobody under the age of 14 can access social media. You can't drive, but you want to hang out on Facebook with your friends? Too bad. The US is banning TikTok. You're not even allowed to have funny memes on your phone anymore. Turkey banned the entirety of Twitch.tv. Speedrunning doesn't even exist in Turkey anymore. And McDonald's Japan got so sick of the West making fun of their ads that you can't even see McDonald's advertisements for their funny Japanese versions unless you live in Japan. VPNs used to be an optional software that you could download if you wanted an extra level of security to anonymize and encrypt your online traffic to visit stuff without being tracked by whoever might be tracking you. But now it's become a fundamental tool if you wanna be able to access the internet with the freedoms that you've already been used to at this point, without having to worry about the government stepping in and saying that you're not old enough, without having Japan step in and say, hey, you're not cool enough to see our McDonald's ads, and without having to 
worry about anybody tracking how many times you've been Googling Judy Hops for your YouTube jokes. That alone has paid for Surfshark in my opinion. Get ahead of the curve and click the link in the description to download Surfshark VPN for yourself and get a tremendous discount as well as up to three months free with my discount code Sumeto. If you sign up for one of the more premium plans like Surfshark One Plus, you even get additional benefits like Incogni, which I've been using to remove my data from a bunch of different websites that have been tracking me and using it to sell my data to other people. Apparently it saved me over an hour and a half of just people tracking me down. I didn't realize I was so popular. It takes just two clicks to open up Surfshark VPN and then connect to one of any country that you can think of. And then you can browse the internet to your heart's content knowing that you're kept both safe, secure, and encrypted. Thank you Surfshark VPN. Very Bing Chilling. Several weeks ago, I made a video talking about how the US government was moving to ban TikTok on everybody's phones because they were concerned about China's influence through the app. And I think all of us hearing this breathe the collective sigh at the thought that the government thinks we're so stupid that we would let China influence us through anything other than crab rangoons. Well, this next meme is going to be a bit disappointing. This meme starts with a company in China by the name of Dongwan Jilong and their product, food grade, industrial grade, and pharmaceutical grade glycine, a sweetened additive that you can add to whatever to do whatever. The meme that they made wasn't even a meme. It's a very corporate PowerPoint slideshow style thing that's just got a text-to-speech voice advertising the fact that they sell glycine. That's it. No fancy pop-ups, no meme edits. It's like the most boardroom, courtroom drama, clear cut. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. It's, it's, it's kind of boring. Introducing Donghua Jinlong's Food Grade Glycin. Unlock Donghua Jinlong's Food Grade Glycin in 2024. Suitable as a flavor enhancer, sweetener, and nutritional supplement. Also used in pickles, sweet sauces, soy sauce, vinegar, and juices to improve taste. We've been deeply involved in this field for over 40 years, a well-established brand and a large factory, committed to providing you with high quality, high standard, and cost-effective products. I think it's pretty obvious what happened here. This is an industrial company that makes an industrial food and pharmaceutical and industrial additive that's advertising to other big companies that might want to purchase from them. But they don't have a huge marketing budget. They've only been around for 40 years. So what do they do? One of the CEOs has their kid make some promotional material and they use a text-to-speech voice to just talk about some of the talking points. And who knows, maybe other industrial people, maybe the TikTok will get 40 views and maybe it'll make a sale or two. It costs like five bucks to make a TikTok if you have somebody else do it. Does it really matter? The thing about Donghuan Jin Long is that they don't just make industrial grade glycine and food grade glycine, they make pharmaceutical grade glycine. So what the fuck are you all even on? You should be getting on the pharmaceutical grade glycine train. In the age where Congress is looking to ban TikTok the app because they are concerned about Chinese influence using it, does it make sense for us to take a Chinese company doing nothing special and turn it into what everybody's talking about that week? I feel like no. Are you tired of being cucked by inferior industrial and food grade glycine suppliers who don't adhere to FCC, E640, USP, BPEP, and JSFA production standards? Fear not glycine girlies. Edge yourself down to Donghua Jin Long. As 2024's major glycine manufacturer, Donghua Jin Long is able to provide high quality industrial grade glycine from their premium factory on the glorious expressway that is Huagong Middle Road. It's gonna get banned. It's over. It's so funny, but it's not worth it. I mean, that's rule number one. You gotta get your glycine at Donghua Jilong, you know? Donghua Jilong sucks. Wait, what? Donghua sucks. Where do you get your glycine? Hubei Jinfa Chemicals Group? <laughs> oh, this guy. Can I be honest with you guys? I don't know what glycine is. I understand it's a sweetener, but is that something I'm supposed to be aware of? Like, is it on the back of nutritional packets? Does my ramen have glycine in it? It sounds like agave. It, it feels like it's an agave. Is that what it is? Guys, this Don Juan Jean Long food grade glycine stuff, hilarious, by the way, keep it up. Um, but we are dangerously close to this trend being played in front of Congress as evidence that the US population has been brainwashed by China. So keep that one in mind, please. But anyways, when are you guys buying your glycine? Because I'm thinking now before the prices. Glycine. Buy glycine specifically from Dong Hua Jilong. I don't. Like the pharmaceutical, I don't, I don't know, a thousand? I don't, what are they, packets? Just, just get a lot, okay? Amazon, 
just decided that they are going to shut down their walkout style Amazon Fresh stores. If you guys even remember what this is, Amazon had a store, Amazon Fresh, where you could buy groceries and what have you, and they introduced a technology that would allow you to walk into the store, fill your cart with whatever you wanted, and then just walk out. And through some miracle or magic or AI or whatever, they would just know whatever it is you picked out and automatically charge your Amazon account, allowing you to just walk into a store, feel like you're shoplifting, and then walk out, which is all I've ever wanted to do. When this was first announced, I was intrigued because I have a few Amazon Freshes near my house. However, none of them had the walk-in, walk-out, completely, you know, interaction-free checkout technology that Amazon was advertising in only some of their stores. But I watched YouTubers in California who did have access to it, and it looked intriguing. The store was basically empty, no workers, no robots. You walk in, you fill in a basket, and then you just walk out, and it charges your Amazon account like 10 minutes later. There were a few hiccups. If you pick something up and put it back, it wouldn't always register that you put it back. And so sometimes you get charged for stuff that you didn't pick out or some stuff that you didn't actually leave the store with. But I felt like that was acceptable for what felt like new artificial intelligence working to make your shopping experience easier. That is until Amazon revealed that there was no magic or artificial intelligence involved. In fact, the way that they executed this procedure was just by having thousands of unpaid remote Indian workers constantly watching every Everybody who was shopping and then just writing down whatever it is that they bought and charging it to their account. There's two things that's really funny about the situation. The first of which is how is this cheaper? I mean, you're a billion dollar company. Surely you have the ability to develop some software. Your website's one of the better ones on the market. And yet it seemed the right idea to pay people to watch cameras of people buying stuff 24 hours a day? Like that's nonsense, isn't it? Oh, Betty's buying Pringles. Better send her some ads for Pringles. I gotta write that down on my clipboard because I'm not a computer. The fact that they hired a thousand, like they specify a thousand and they specify that they were either unpaid or underpaid Indian remote workers to watch surveillance constantly to replace the job of like, well, what, 10 cashiers? Like, really? Self-checkout already exists. Like, they went so far to make this marginal improvement over something I already use at Walmart. The second thing that I think is so hilarious about this is the fact that artificial intelligence, some sort of automated machine to allow you to go through checkout without any human interaction, was actually being powered by more human interaction than you could possibly imagine. And it makes me think, what other artificial intelligence things that we think are machines doing learning are actually just thousands of Indian guys? When I'm playing Super Mario Bros and I'm jumping on Koopas, is that a computer making them run back and forth or is the Goomba being controlled by Raj? <laughs> Stupid. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to join the Hyena Pack, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below the like button. Go and get yourself Surfshark VPN. Thank you again so much for sponsoring the video. You guys get a huge discount and a bunch of months free if you use my link in the description. Check them out and I will catch you guys later this week. Peace.